Okay, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, uh, a little catch up. I've been out for a little bit. Uh, went into the dock to have a ganglion cyst looked at, and two days later, I was in surgery. It was apparently the biggest one that uh, that she, the surgeon, had ever done. Uh, so they wanted to get it out right away. Anyways, uh, I was ten ish days in like a half cast kind of thing. Of course, you can't get any dirty or wet. Um, came off on Friday. And uh, no real restrictions other than heavy heavy lifting. Uh, so now I can wash my hand. I can't go in the ocean yet, uh, which is fine. But uh, we got hurricanes coming through, all kinds of that stuff. So uh, anyway, uh, we're back at it. Okay, so today's project is going to be some uh, some fun stuff, some community service work. Uh, you know, there's very, very few machine shops here on the island, if any, uh, a couple in Hilo, but they're so backlogged and their equipment is so outdated that uh, to get anything nice done there is a little bit of a challenge. Anyways, um, We got a top fuel clutch. Basically, there's a car in Hilo. James owns a, a top fuel car, and uh, they are desperately trying to get this thing down the track and post a good number. Uh, you know, there's no real competition here, but uh, it's a personal goal, and I think it's worthy, and it's uh, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to do everything I can to help these guys out. Uh, they got a guy coming uh, to tune the car. Uh, coming from England, actually, uh, this next weekend. And if the weather holds out, we don't want this clutch to be the limiting factor. So we got to get this thing flat so the new discs will seat properly. So here's the flywheel, actually. Um, got it in the Nardini. And I made a hub for it out of some old steel, welded some stuff together. I uh, laid this thing over and I transfer punched four locations for screws, drilled and tapped on the bridge port, put this thing back in, trued the face so it would be very flat, bolted the flywheel to it, and here we go. I've made the first couple of cuts and we got all the big stuff uh, knocked down and now we're getting ready to, uh, to make the final cut here. Maybe, maybe, maybe take two more cuts, we'll see. My only question was what's this going to do when I get to one of these steel rivets? This is probably some sort of sintered iron, the material here, but uh, the rivets are definitely steel, but it seems to be going over them fairly well. You know, anything's gonna be better than what they had. There were some seriously, maybe 20, 30 thou grooves in this thing. So, uh, so as long as I cut this thing flat, parallel to the mounting surface, which I think I've taken care of that adequately enough, should be good. Made that, uh, made that one cut at 5 thou and it took care of everything else. So it was, it was high by like 30 thou just out here where the disc had not rubbed. So, and then I had maybe 10 thou of divoting, you know, uh, wear lines in the face that uh, made, uh, I made a big 30 thou cut, cleaned the edges up out here and here, and then made a, about, a, about a 5 thou cut and then you saw the last 5,000 cut. So that's what we took off this guy. The obvious question is, why don't you just punch these things out and then, 
you know, surface this thing with a, with a grinder or something like that. Well, I don't have that tool. And I'm not so sure that uh, James has that tool either. But, uh, hey, this is going to work for what they need. I uh, can always hit this with a, with a little sanding disc. Just kind of even take more of the high spots off. Because it isn't, it isn't a ground finish, but it's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, we'll call that good on the flywheel. Now we got to do the pressure plate. And here's the uh, the pressure plate. Okay, so you can see this isn't... Uh, well, it looks like it's lacking some stages. Um, and I think I think the, uh, the super modern, super high-end top fuel clutches nowadays have even more fingers than this. But uh, I was told we're going to do some more counterweighting work. Uh, and that this adjustment can always be gotten again. Uh, I think they have, um, I think they have, at least I've seen it before, a micrometer that can plug into this thing, or, or a dial indicator rather, and you can set this. So I think this may be the base adjustment. Whew, I'm getting out of my league. There's not many guys do top fuel clutches, and it's, it's not my profession, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure how far this nut is down. I'm going to mark one stud and mark the, the pressure plate so that I return this in exactly the same position. And I'm going to measure how far down each one of these nuts is, and I'm going to return it exactly the way it was. I'm going to unbolt this thing, and I'm going to try to put this in my lathe with the six jaw and, uh, and turn this face just like I did the other. All right, we're gonna make a uh, gonna make a little mark on one of these studs. I'm just gonna use a file, make a little line. They're they're uh, ARP studs, pretty hard, but file will make a little line. And then what I'm gonna do is make the same corresponding line out here. Just a, just a shiny spot. Then I think we'll also maybe circle that with a, uh, with a Sharpie or something or a paint pen. Now what we gotta do is measure how far down these nuts are. And I think to do that, we'll be just fine with like a, with like a caliper. Which here they are. Twenty-four thou. Twenty-two thou. Thirty-six thou. Twenty-four thou. It looks like twenty-four thou is a magic number, huh? Twenty-five thou. Thirty-five thou, eighteen thou on that one, twenty-one thou, thirty thou. All right. Yep, I think we're just going to take these guys right off and we're going to let them set this thing back up. It'll be a good opportunity to go from square one for them, I think. All right, here we go. Not on there by a lot. Hardly any resistance to those locks at all. Okay, now the cover should come off, and we are left with. All right, so here's the uh, here's the pressure plate setup. 
You can see I'm just grabbing it internally on the bore. Concentricity is not such a big deal because we're just surfacing off all of this stuff. But what I want to make sure of is that to something, you know, I have this thing running true. And these edges right here are not too banged up. This thing's had a lot of wear over its life. But uh, um, I've decided to use this machine surface as my zero. So what I do, what I'm doing is uh, got an indicator up here. And what we're doing is, if you can see that, I'll just run this guy by. And we're just ticking all these, right there. Got him a little bit, a couple thou, a little bit more. Thou didn't really hit that one. Couple thou there. Couple thou there. So that's what we're doing right there. Okay, so there we go. Um, I've just kind of touched this guy off very, very lightly, maybe a thou, and I'm getting contact all the way around. So uh, I'm just going to engage the feed and come across and see, see how it looks. And yeah, it's a nice slow feed rate. Got out of gear. It's promising how even the cut is, so that's good. Boy, we're low right there though, huh? So, I think we'll take another two thou. We'll skim past and see how we, how we do. Sounds pretty good. Uh, catch back up with you when I get this guy cleaned up. Okay, so I slipped this back together, just how it came apart. Uh, obviously, the other side's all cleaned up. Uh, got my bolts started down, or my nuts started down, holding the springs in. And I'm going to return this back to about 25,000 per. Each, each nut is going to be below... 25 down, and that's 24 and a half. That one's a little, that's 25. <laughs> I, I didn't check this, I just sent them down. That's 14. Eighteen. Okay. So it worked out, we're going to go ahead and uh, go up to James' house and deliver the clutch and uh, maybe have a look at the, uh, at the car. And uh, I think it's super cool to point out the fact that, uh, that James is uh, campaigning a top fuel funny car in Hawaii out of a garage, a regular garage space. I mean, this is, this is just a story of it can be done with enough fortitude and willpower and drive. 
And uh, so, James, how, how did you get into this whole thing? Yeah, uh, so good question. Aloha. Um, so <laughs> this journey started um, over 20 years ago. Uh, so I went to my first NHRA race in Phoenix in 2001. And so at that time, um, you know, I saw the cars going out. Actually, I heard the cars before I got to the track. And uh, so the cars were booming down track as we pulled in. And I told my wife, I said, you know, I got to build one of these things um, once we got into the track and saw them run. So at the time, I was building a, a big inch nitrous engine for my street car. And then uh, I switched gears right at that point, And I said, you know, I'm going to switch gears and build this. Uh, so I've had this since 2002. Um, it's an old Paul Smith car that Johnny Gray uh, drove and bought from Paul. And then I got it from Johnny when he went to drive for the Worshams in 2001, 2002. So we're in 2002. Um, but then it got parked and I had kids and work and all kinds of other stuff. But uh, finally got it on the track a couple years ago. And yeah, so we, we've been making test hits. We're... We made about uh, eight or nine runs so far, and so we finally got down the track last time. Uh, made it to the, the 1320, uh, dropped a hole at the hit, dropped another hole down track, but still around 234. So, um, so yeah, with the nice. with the clutch, we'll try to get it down the track uh, a bit faster, put more load on it, throw more clutch at it, and uh, see what we can do with that. So, you're having you're having. Uh... You're having somebody come and you're working with somebody who's who's uh, more experienced at this and is kind of coaching along? Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. so good question. Um, so my longtime friend and mentor, uh, his name was Roland Leong. He was a, a pioneer in the sport of drag racing. You know, local boy done good at the big in the big leagues. Uh, he passed away last December. Uh, so, but he was a big help. Ara were the first two guys. Todd is the crew chief for Bob Tasca. Uh, so Todd, you know, gave me a lot of the tune-up information and, and helped me with that part of it. And the guy who finally got us going, uh, flew down here was Johnny West. So Johnny uh, has been a big help to put all the pieces finally together, get us to the track and to the starting line. Um, and Roland introduced me to Johnny. Um, but yeah, so, you know, three very experienced guys at the highest level of the sport. Well, there you go. You know, uh, it's really unfortunate that uh, this darn cell phone was a little too full of data and it was only letting us record about 31 seconds at a time. So kind of chopped up James' interview, which was super interesting. And uh, the history of that car, really crazy. Uh, we wish them all the best luck uh, in, their, in their campaign to get that thing deep into the fives hopefully uh and maybe that'll happen this weekend if the weather will let us do that uh we're happy to be a part i'm happy to be a part of that uh it, it was essentially lunch work uh to keep uh we'll, we'll call it community service work and uh keeps the people of the big island entertained it's it's a it's a great investment uh, a little bit of time and uh, it's, it's really nothing for me to do that so uh, very happy to be involved uh just want to say we just crossed 500 subscribers. This is a big deal. Wow, we're going big time. Uh, so please, uh, please like, share, subscribe, and, uh, and stay tuned for the next video.